Greetings. My name is Scott Cedarquist, and I want to thank you for tuning into this pre recorded ASAB webinar concerning updated braking recommendations for towed agricultural equipment. This is part one of a two part series. I have been part of the ASAB staff since 2001 and I'm pleased to introduce the topic and speaker today. I want to start by explaining the origins of these webinars. They were developed to explain the content in the new five-part ASAB braking standard to manufacturers of towed field equipment. In fact, we had support from all three North American trade associations in promoting these webinars to their members. These three groups also faithfully circulate press releases and other standards development information to their members throughout the year. The material is now being provided to you as an attendee at the ASABE Annual International Meeting. The format today is simple. The recording of the webinar will be played on demand along with the recorded Q&A session for when it was presented to the TOAD implement manufacturers. If you have questions that are not answered by viewing the recorded Q&A portion of the webinar, please let me or Carla Van Gilder know. We will pass your question or questions along to the ASABE Braking Committee for consideration. I will also need to say a few words about ASABE. You may or may not know that we are the primary standards development organization in North America for agricultural equipment and systems. We currently publish over 280 national standards and represent the U.S. in 15 distinct ISO committees or subcommittees. The majority of this work is related to equipment design. All ASABE committees are open. Now I will introduce the main presenter. Today, Bruce Hawkins will be presenting on the new five-part ASABE braking standard. Bruce is a 10-year ASABE member working as an engineer for John Deere. He was also the project lead for the development of these standards. When a group of ASABE members and staff started talking about doing this webinar and the subsequent second part, it was felt that the most important message for manufacturers and designers of towed implements is how to determine if any of their products require brakes. Today, Bruce will provide an overview of the standards with an emphasis on answering this key question. With that, I now turn it over to Bruce. This presentation will be focused on ASABE S648, Agricultural Field Equipment Braking Standard. This standard is divided up into five separate parts. Part one is general requirements. Part two, requirements for agricultural tractors. Part three, requirements for self-propelled and special self-propelled machines. Part four, requirements for towed vehicles. And part five, requirements for the interface between towing vehicle and towed vehicles. The standard was not created for regulation. It was developed as a voluntary standard. However, compliance to a voluntary industry standard may provide some protection from litigation. Today's focus is on part four, requirements for towed vehicles. Specifically, we will cover if a towed vehicle requires service brakes. Topics that will be discussed today are terms and definitions, service brake vehicle classes, those classes towed by a tractor or the class towed by uh, SSP, parking, information for use provided to the operator, and the presentation will finish up with some examples on the application of the standard. Key terms and definitions that are applied throughout the S648 standard and today's presentation are listed on the next two slides. These definitions are repeated here in this presentation and are included in S648-1. These terms are maximum transport mass, maximum allowable mass of the vehicle specified by the manufacturer for maximum transport speed or 50 kilometers per hour, whichever speed is less. The next term, minimum recommended towing vehicle mass. This is the mass of the towing vehicle recommended by the towed vehicle manufacturer. Note, 
the towed vehicle manufacturer anticipates the towing vehicle complies with S648-2 or S648-3. Maximum transport mass ratio is the next term. This is the maximum transport mass of the towed vehicle divided by the minimum recommended towing vehicle mass. Maximum transport speed is the next term. This is the maximum travel speed recommended by the vehicle manufacturer when the vehicle is configured for transport, including on-road use. Maximum mass. This is the mass stated by the agricultural vehicle manufacturer to be technically permissible. The next term is agricultural tractor. This is a self-propelled agricultural vehicle having at least two axles and wheels or endless tracks, particularly designed to pull agricultural trailers and pull, push, carry, and operate implements used for agricultural work. SSP is an acronym for Special Self-Propelled Machine. This is a, ma a machine where a majority of the mass is on the front axle. An example of this type of machine is a combine or windrower. Service brake vehicle classes towed by tractor. There are four service brake classes of vehicles being towed by a tractor. They are unbraked, low mass, high speed, high mass, low speed, and high mass, high speed. This graph shows the criteria for the four classes. Note that the classes are determined by both the maximum transport speed and the maximum transport mass ratio. Recall that the maximum transport mass ratio is a function of the maximum transport mass divided by the minimum recommended mass of the towing vehicle. The unbraked class contains the following requirements. A maximum ma transport mass ratio less than or equal to 1.5 and a maximum transport speed less than or equal to 32 kilometers per hour or a maximum transport mass ratio less than or equal to 0.6 and maximum transport speed less than or equal to 40 kilometers per hour. This category does not require service brakes. An example of equipment in this class is a hay rake or a hay tether. The low mass High speed class contains the following requirements. A maximum transport mass ratio between 0 0.6 and 1.5, and a maximum transport speed between 32 kilometers per hour and 50 kilometers per hour, or the combination of maximum transport mass ratio less than or equal to 1.5, and a maximum transport speed between 40 kilometers per hour and 50 kilometers per hour. Service brakes are required for this class. This is a new class that wasn't present in the previous brake standard. The high mass, low speed class contains the following requirements. Maximum transport mass ratio between 1.5 and 4.5 with a maximum transport speed less than or equal to 32 kilometers per hour. Towed equipment meeting this combination of requirements will require service brakes. Vehicles in this class can be a single or multiple vehicle train. The mass of each towed vehicle is added together to determine total mass. Brakes can be on one or all towed equipment vehicles as long as the combination of towed vehicles can stop as prescribed. Examples of equipment in this class are air seeders. The high mass, high speed class contains the following requirements. Maximum transport mass ratio between 1.5 and 4.5, and maximum transport speed between 32 kilometers per hour and 50 kilometers per hour. Vehicles in this class can be a single or multiple vehicle train. The mass of each towed vehicle is added together to determine total mass. 
Brakes should be on all towed vehicles. Examples of equipment in this class are liquid manure haulers. Recall that SSP is a machine with a majority of its mass on the front axle. Examples are combines and windrowers. Allowing SSPs to tow is a new addition to ag equipment braking. There are two classes that apply to SSPs. They are unbraked and braked. This graph, as it appears in the standard, shows the criteria for the two classes. Maximum transport speed and the maximum transport mass ratio are used to define the classes here also as they are for tractors. The unbraked class contains the following requirements. Maximum transport mass ratio less than or equal to 0 0.5 and a maximum transport speed less than or equal to 32 kilometers per hour, or a maximum transport mass ratio of less than or equal to 0 0.4, and maximum transport speed less than or equal to 40 kilometers per hour. Toad equipment meeting either of these two combinations of requirements will not require service brakes. An example of equipment like this is a header trailer. The braked class contains the following requirements. The maximum transport mass ratio between 0 0.5 and 1, or a maximum transport mass ratio between 0 0.4 and 0 0.5, with a maximum transport speed between 32 kilometers per hour and 40 kilometers per hour, or a maximum transport speed between 40 kilometers per hour and 50 kilometers per hour. Toad equipment meeting any of these combinations of requirements will require service brakes. An example of this class could be a crop residue collection system. Parking is the next topic. The requirement in the standard is to inform the operator of the maximum permissible grade to park on and instructions on how to park. The information is to appear in either the operator's manual, a decal, or both. This is not a requirement for a parking brake. If a towed vehicle is stated as having a parking brake, then it shall meet the requirements listed. These requirements include holding on a minimum 20% grade at maximum mass and supplying an actuation location within the operator station, on the ground, or both. In addition to performance requirements, the standard requires the information listed below be made available to the operator. This can be done by the operator's manual, a decal, or any other means as defined by the manufacturer. The information to be included is instructions for operator to confirm the unbraked towed vehicle does not exceed the capabilities of the intended towing vehicle. Information on the towed vehicle train configuration, if applicable, the maximum allowable parking grade and instructions, the maximum design ground speed, the maximum mass, the maximum transport mass, the maximum transport speed, and the re minimum recommended towing vehicle mass. Now I will present several example exercises to determine if service brakes are required on the defined towed vehicles. Example one. In this example, the towed vehicle comes in with a 48,000 pound maximum transport mass and the minimum recommended towing vehicle mass is 12,000 pounds. The maximum transport speed is 30 miles an hour. The resulting maximum transport mass ratio is four. Will service brakes be needed? Looking at speed first, draw a vertical line up from 30 miles an hour. Now looking at maximum transport mass ratio, draw a horizontal line from three and a half. 
the intersection of the two lines occurs in the high speed, high mass area. With these conditions, service brakes will be required. Example two. In this example, the towed vehicle comes in with a 7,000 pound maximum transport mass and the minimum recommended towing vehicle mass is 10,000 pounds. The maximum transport speed is 30 miles an hour. The resulting maximum transport mass ratio is 0 0.7. Will service brakes be needed? Looking at speed first, draw a vertical line up from 30 miles an hour. Now looking at maximum transport mass ratio, draw a horizontal line from 0 0.7. The intersection of the two lines occurs in the high speed, low mass area. With these conditions, service brakes will be required. Example three. In this example, the towed vehicle comes in with a 12,500 pound maximum transport mass and the minimum recommended towing vehicle mass is 10,000 pounds. The maximum transport speed is 19 miles an hour. This gives a resulting maximum transport mass ratio of 1.25. Will service brakes be needed? Looking at speed first, draw a vertical line up from 19 miles an hour. Now looking at maximum transport mass ratio, draw a horizontal line from 1.25. The intersection of the two lines occurs in the unbraked area. With these conditions, service brakes will not be required. In the final example, a train within the guidelines defined by the manufacturer. This consists of two towed vehicles that come in with maximum transport masses of 30,000 pounds and 40,000 pounds respectively. The minimum recommended towing vehicle mass is 20,000 pounds. The maximum transport speed is 19 miles an hour. The resulting maximum transport mass ratio is 3.5. Will service brakes be needed? Looking at speed first, Draw a vertical line up from 19 miles an hour. Now looking at maximum transport mass ratio, draw a horizontal line from 3 and 3.5. The intersection of the two lines occurs in the low speed, high mass area. With these conditions, service brakes will be required. The combination of the two towed vehicles within the guidelines defined by the manufacturer will need to meet the requirements for that class as one. Brakes could be on one or both of the towed vehicles. Hello, my name is Carla Van Gilder. I am the Global Standards Administrator at ASABE, and I had the pleasure of working with Bruce on the Braking Standard projects. ASAB is an ANSI accredited standards developer, which means the development and approval of all our standards must follow the ANSI essential requirements for developing standards. My job for the braking projects was to work with Bruce and the development group, ballot the proposals to the committee, and to ensure all the proper steps were taken along the way. I want to share with you a variety of ways for which you can obtain the braking standards or any other ASABE standard. Each standard can be purchased individually. There is a discounted rate if five standards are purchased at one time. The braking standards are also available on the 2020 ASABE CD or flash drive, which also contains 276 other ASABE standards. Ordering information is provided on the slide. Every ASABE member gets five free standards annually as a membership benefit. If you are interested in becoming an ASABE member, please see our website for information on membership. If you are a FEMA member and would like a copy of these ASABE standards, please contact Vernon Schmidt at FEMA. 
Thank you for joining us today. Greetings from Michigan and thanks to Carla for that update. My name is Scott Cedarquist and I have been the Standards and Technical Director at ASABE since 2001. We appreciate the interest from the viewers and all of the hard work Bruce and the ASABE Breaking Committee put into the development of these five engineering standards. There's been a lot of interest in the development of these documents and it seemed logical to share the details in a webinar format. Bruce has graciously offered to let me distribute the webinar details to the attendees. This will allow you to go back and review the information at a later date. This is much appreciated. In a minute, we will begin our Q&A session, but first, a couple of additional details. In two weeks, we are offering another related webinar on break selection. If you have not signed up for both webinars and you are interested in part two, please send me an email with your interest. I can be reached at cedarq at asabe.org. During the Q&A, your questions can be entered via the chat feature located at the bottom of your screen. The question will be read and addressed as time allows. So now I turn the mic over to Bruce. Thanks for your interest. So this is Bruce Hawkins. Um, thank you for joining the, the webinar today. Uh, Scott, do we have any questions? Well, the first one was in the in the chat feature, uh, Bruce, and we've answered it already. Will the materials be made available? And uh, yes, we will send out um, a PDF of the slides here in the near term. And at some future point, we'll take the recorded webinar and we'll put that on the ASAB website and send the attendees a link to that. But uh, and we appreciate Bruce that you're letting us do that. The uh, another question I see here is the maximum grade indication a new addition to the breaking standard? And I think the question would be, was that in the S, uh, was 365 that was withdrawn when we published these? So the maximum grade indication uh, wasn't in S365. Um, S365 just contained requirements that uh, if a park break was, um, was supplied, um, that it had to meet that those had to meet the specific uh, performance requirements for that. And so we added uh, the, uh, the grade requirement in. Uh, we had a lot of e some equipment where um, it's not all when in its resting position or it's in, a, in its parked position, it, it, it may not all be on wheels. So parts of the, of the, the vehicle are, are contacting the ground. And in the standard, we really couldn't define the, the parking performance based on all these, all the different ground conditions that could be enveloped or uh, could be uh, experienced. So we, but we did want to uh, inform the operator a little bit about what, what kind of parking uh, grade you, the, the vehicle could be safely parked on. So that's why that was included with that. So, so it is, yes, it is a new information requirement. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Uh, we have another one here. Will these breaking standards become federal, state, or provincial laws? And I think I can answer that. I have had no indication in the US of any interest from the federal government or state governments putting this into law. These were designed as voluntary standards. I have had some interest from regulators in the provinces of Ontario and Quebec and Canada but I don't know if they will reference these standards directly or not. They're very interested in the content. So I think that answers that one. Then we had, um, how, let's see here. Why should my company comply with these standards? Do you have any comments on that? Yeah, so uh, initially I said in, in the presentation, it. it it does provide a hedge against litigation. Um, if you know, there is a chance of that. It's not a guarantee, but it does provide a bit of a hedge there. Um, the other aspect from the performance standpoint, it does provide um, improved compatibility with equipment, particularly particularly when equipment is from different manufacturers. If we can kind of have a, a common um, performance between the towed and towing and, and 
the towing kind of has an expectation of what the towed equipment's going to do and vice versa. I think that's, um, it does provide some increased compatibility, increased levels of braking performance through uh, this compatibility. And I think that that's probably just good for the industry to have that, so. Okay. What connector provides the electrical braking on tractors, combines, and wind rollers? Uh, right now, we haven't defined a, anything for electrical type of braking uh, as a standard. So right now, it's it's uh, kind of still up to the manufacturer, the towed the towed vehicle manufacturer, what that electrical connector is. Um, I guess I would say the industry isn't overly uh, standardized on things. You know, the on-road is pretty close, um, but on the off-road side, it, it, there, I haven't seen a lot of work from the electrical side, so. Okay. How long do we have to bring our equipment into compliance with this standard? Okay, so it's, um, it's really kind of up to the manufacturer. So this is a voluntary standard. Um, and so it's really the manufacturer's decision uh, when they want to bring themselves into compliance. Uh, performance wise, there's a little bit of difference between S365 and, and 648. Uh, in some places, there's a slightly higher level of performance. In some places, it's lower. Um, as far as on the interface, uh, we're not just, S365 only had pneumatic, um, 648 offers pneumatic as well as dual line hydraulic, as well as other, as other means. Uh, the, big, the big push was to try and get it so um, when the operator of the towing vehicle uh, presses a service brake pedal that both the towing vehicle and the towed vehicle break at the same time based off that one action. Um, that's really what the desire is. Uh, a lot of times when you do a hard brake stop, you're not, you know, you're, you're both, you're trying to steer as well as trying to brake. And we'd really like to have it so that the operator can keep both hands on the steering wheel while applying the service brakes. Okay. If the towed vehicle doesn't have a parking brake, how is the maximum grade requirement determined? For example, an implement on tires with a jack on the hitch. Okay, that'll really be up to the, the manufacturer for that. Uh, one possibility is just to say to park it on the level and give instructions on how to park. So it's, um, we're, really, we're kind of leaving that open, open for that. Um, each of the manufacturers is, is gonna know his equipment very well and should be able to make that, that decision on what criteria that will be. Bruce, this is John Fisher. Uh, one suggestion to add to that is each manufacturer should determine the implement with the parking brake, what's the maximum angle that it parks safely on. If that's 20 degrees, that's fine, 10 degrees, 10%, and then that should be what they state as the maximum uh, safe parking and they can test their own machines. Yep, thanks, John. Okay. Uh, we have another one here. Would a decal stating maximum towing speed be enough to be compliant in case the implement doesn't need brakes if it's towed at a certain speed? Um, it'll be part way there. I guess we didn't specify, well, the standard specifies the information to communicate to the operator. And it doesn't specify by which means that information is communicated. So it can be in a decal, it can be in the owner's manual. Um, it, the standard doesn't go as far as determining what information can go on a detail and what information goes in the owner's manual. Um, it's just that that information has to be supplied. It'd probably be good to do it both, I would think, yep. both in the decal and in the owner's manual. Okay, thanks, Bruce. What if my implements are only loaded in the field and not loaded on the highway? Do they still need brakes? 
Okay, so the need for brakes is really determined by the operating conditions um, recommended by the, by the manufacturer. And um, so it's, it's really independent of whether it's on the highway or in the field. Uh, we're starting to see more higher speed infield operations going on, uh, whether they're transporting infield, um, uh, which, which typically we oftentimes see. So it's really important to, um, for the manufacturer, manufacturer to uh, recommend those conditions of, of max transport speed, um, max transport mass, and then and there's also that minimum towing machine mass. So it really doesn't matter whether it's in road or on field, or in field or on road. Okay, thanks Bruce. Will, will, will wheel blocks, and I usually call them chocks, become a requirement to overcome parking brake failure? So this one again, it's really up to the manufacturer if they wanna recommend uh, using wheel, wheel chocks or wheel blocks. Um, and right now, if you're equipped with a park brake, um, there really isn't a secondary parking brake requirement. Uh, if the manufacturer chooses to uh, recommend using wheel chocks along with your park brake, I think that's, that's up to, for the manufacturer to decide. Okay, thank you. When towing multiple vehicles and brakes are needed and it is elected to only put brakes on one unit, is there a preferred unit to put brakes on, the front or the rear? Well, that's a good, good technical question. Um, I guess in my opinion, it kind of depends where most of the mass is. Uh, usually you'd want to put the most brakes on the vehicle that has the most mass. That way you can probably optimize your, your uh, brake utilization and utilize as much uh, of uh, potential brake force as you can. Uh, just due to the coefficient of friction and, and the mass. Uh, on the other side of it, uh, if you really want to optimize the uh, the stability of a braking event, you're probably going to want to put the brakes on the on the rearmost vehicle. That's going to keep the uh, um, the combination of towed vehicle and towing vehicles uh, in a in a straight line a little better, and it'd be less likely to have any kind of jackknifing effect or those kind of, that kind of situation. Okay, thank you. Are air or hydraulic brakes an option as well? Yeah, they are. Um, the, on the standard, we really didn't specify the type of brake component you can use. Um, in the interface, we do have pneumatic and we do have hydraulic, um, but it's not limited to those. Uh, it kind of goes back to a, uh, the performance side and the the actuation method. Okay. What means are we to use to activate brake systems on implements? Surge only or question, question, question mark? So really it's up to the manufacturer again. Um, surge brakes are okay as long as um, you know, when you're designing a surge system, you need to know how fast your towing vehicle's decelerating, or kind of a rough way to say that. You need to know what your deceleration rate is on your on your towing vehicle, so you can generate um, the respective uh, brake force on your on your implement. Um, so we're we're really not the standard isn't being written to define specifically what the interface is going to be. Uh, it offers a combination or an option of interface. Um, so it's, it's really kind of how the manufacturer, want, the, the towed vehicle manufacturer wants to actuate. So it, there's the choice of using the, the interfaces in the standard or, or anything else. Okay. Uh, Scott, let me add to Bruce's answer. This is John Fisher again. Uh, I want to plug uh, in two weeks, there'll be a second webinar that will go into a lot more spe specifics and information for people that do put their brakes on implements. Now this was 
one was mostly for do I need breaks? The second one, and I want to plug again, and it'd be June 18th, about the same time of the day. We'll deal much more with specifics. I have breaks on my implements. How do I connect? And those things. So a lot more answers will be available then. Okay. Thanks, John. Aren't these brakes dependent on the towing vehicle? Not many customers have tractors that have this capability, these capabilities. So that's a good point. Um, generally in, in, in North America, uh, a lot of tractors don't have um, these uh, interface means, whether it's pneumatic or, or hydraulic. Uh, I guess on more of the recent tractors, probably in the last five years, uh, there's probably more capability that the dual line hydraulic could be uh, added on as a as a kit, uh, you know, after the the tractor has been received by the customer. Uh, pneumatic is not quite so easy. It's it's a lot more extensive of an add on. Um, so that's uh, so to answer your question. Um, you're you're right. Not many customers have it. Uh, newer tractors they do have the capability to add it on. I guess this, this is just something for uh, manufacturers to consider. Um, I guess you have to kind of keep an eye on or keep up to date with what some of the, the towed vehicle or towing vehicle manufacturers are doing too. So. Okay. How do I estimate the mass of the towing machine and the mass ratio? Okay, so it's a, it's a good question. Um, So this number, I guess there's there's two ways to do it. I guess if the if the towed machine is primarily something that needs uh, a pulling requirement, so it needs uh, x amount of of force to actually pull it through the field and and perform its job adequately. Um, I guess you can kind of go through. You know, you have to assume some some coefficient of friction coefficient of friction between the ground and the tire. And from there, you can kind of determine uh, what a mass should be. Uh, on the other side, if you have like a, a PTO powered implement, um, I guess you'll have to assume some sort of ballast uh, ratio between between the the mass and the and the PTO power. Um, there's some values for that out there in in, in general information. Um, so I guess from the start, that's that's where I would I would start from on that. But there are a lot more considerations with that too. So, and that may be a topic, if there's more people interested in, in defining a better way to do that, maybe that's a topic for discussion down the road. I've heard estimates of so many pounds in general per horsepower of tractor used in the past too in some of the dialogue. So, Sometimes I think people will say you have to have at least this many horsepower of a tractor uh, to use my implement. You know that's what's recommended. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not. But okay, thanks, Scott. Our owner's manual and decals specify 20 mile per hour as the speed limit. This has been the case for many years. Now tractor speeds are higher. Does tractor capacity dictate the speed, or does our recommend does does tractor capacity dictate the speed, or does our recommendation? When our dealers connect it, the implement to a truck and deliver it to a customer, they definitely exceed our twenty mile per hour recommendation. Yeah. So, so the question is, does tractor capacity dictate the speed, or does the the recommendation of the towed vehicle. So it's the towed vehicle's recommendation for speed um, is the important one. And that's why it's important to uh, provide means to inform the operator of what that value is. So it's good to see that uh, you've got owner's manual and, and decals listed. So I think that's, that's a, a very good approach. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So this next one is, uh, it's kind of a two-part question. Does S348 completely replace S365? And I can answer that yes, 365 has been withdrawn. If yes, 
then, then when does S648 become active? Well, it is published and Bruce answered in another question about when the manufacturer should start to comply with it. So Bruce, is there anything else you wanna add here? Um, not really, I think we've, we've covered that a little bit here. I guess if there's more questions on that, we can, we can talk about it too. But um, for right now, yeah, SS48 is active, it's published and it's um, up to the manufacturer to decide when they wanna comply. Okay. Uh, Scott, let me add to that again, John Fisher. Normally we consider, uh, or what I've seen in the past is to try to be compliant with it within a year from the published date uh, of the new standard. Do you know when this date was published, Scott? Um, it's on the date, it's on the copy of the standard. I don't have that in front of me. Uh, maybe Carla I can, it's very recently, it's just a few weeks ago. It yeah. made th this year's CD, so I'm thinking May, yeah, Carla just typed May in. So, uh, so yeah, this, this webinar, we wanted to get this webinar out as soon as possible because of the, put to, right after the publication of the document. So that should answer that one. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, here's a new one. How do you know if machines will have to be properly tested? If yes, which lab or administration will be approved to do that? Okay, um, so again, it's up to the manufacturer to, to determine if the machines are gonna be tested. And this is a, yeah, it's up to the manufacturer to decide who, who's gonna do the test. You can do it internally to your company or you can hire a different uh, third-party firm to perform the tests. So there's no requirement or no specification within S S648 for that. You know of any labs that would do this? I I'm really not aware of any third party that does that in North America. So. Okay. How and this one we've we've kind of covered before. How should the recommended towing vehicle mass be determined? And uh, is there anything more you want to add? Um, no, I think you know. The more times you see that question, uh, the more attention that issue should get. Uh, it is a, it is kind of a, a unique number to determine. Um, so I think uh, maybe we'll have to address that in in future. Okay. Yeah, that's that is a good point. These standards are living, breathing documents, and most likely will there will be some revisions in the future. So uh, we'll keep the trade associations posted if any changes are recommended or proposed so that you're aware of what these are as the, as the work on the standards are being done. Where can I find and obtain dual hydraulic brake systems? Okay, as I mentioned a little earlier, um, the dual hydraulic has kind of come into, into being, it grew off of the single line hydraulic that was floating around a little bit. Um, it's primarily coming out of Europe. Uh, most of the major tractor manufacturers uh, at least offer this on uh, vehicles that are, are delivered to Europe. Um, it does offer an easier add-on than, than the pneumatic, like I mentioned before. Uh, so there is some, um, it, does, it does exist. Um, the technology's out there. Um, it, it's still changing a little bit, but in general practice, it's not, it's not, it, it's reasonably stable, or it is stable. Um, so yeah, and I think as, as time goes on, you're gonna see more of that option, uh, more of that option being available in North America. And it is available as an add-on right now on, on, by some manufacturers. Okay, I'm on a, Backtrack, I just got another note. The standards were published, the effective, or not the effective date, the publication date was March, not May. So I stand corrected on that. Um, and I'm gonna skip ahead one question since we talked about Europe. How does this standard relate to breaking standards commonly specified in the EU? Okay, so what's done in the EU? Um, so tractors and towed equipment are, are very much regulated uh, in the EU, and it isn't really a standard that's developed. It, it's it's regulation. It was done by uh, the EU Commission. Um, the brake performance requirements, the actual stopping performance, 
in S648 uh, for for tractors in particular is is very is pretty much the same. So uh, that's really what one of the tweaks was going from 365 to 648 was that the st the the tractor stopping performance pretty much matched what was going to be done in the EU. Uh, where we're quite a bit different yet uh, is in the uh, SSP or the, the self-propelled uh, equipment as well as uh, the towed equipment. Uh, the EU requires towed equipment to have brakes on, on pretty much every, every piece of equipment. Uh, it has to be very light in order for it not to have brakes. And uh, the deceleration rates are, are, will match uh, what the towing vehicle has, at, you know, what the minimums match. So, uh, and, it, and in Europe, they really don't want the, the towed vehicle pushing the towing vehicle at all. Well, they really want to minimize that. Here in North America, that's not uh, as big an issue. You know, we allow up to one and a half times the mass of the towing vehicle to, to not have brakes. So we have a totally different situation from that. And uh, we're a lot, the North American, or this standard is, is, is uh, kind of an extension of what S3, S365 had relative to that allowing more push on the towing vehicle. Okay, thank you. So are anhydrous ammonia tank transport tanks covered by these standards? In essence, they are. It doesn't specifically say that they are or aren't, but I think they fall into the field equipment category. Um, they're also hauled on the road a lot. Uh, by pickup trucks and such. And I think once they're on the road, I think you really have to identify with, uh, what the towing capacity of the, or the braking capacity of the towing vehicle is once it's on the road. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Is the braking power of the towing vehicle considered in developing these standards? Could some lighter towing vehicles bring an unbraked towed implement to a safe stop if equipped with brakes that could handle the total mass. So the towing vehicle, tractors in particular, uh, that brake performance and the brake requirements are in, in 648-2. And in there, it does um, make, require the tractor to at least, um, have have a specific stopping performance when that one and a half uh, times mass is is included. Uh, the other option that a tractor has is uh, they they can specify something less than one and a half if they want to, but it, it, again that has to be communicated, just like what the the towing the towing machines or the towing vehicles are. So that allotment up to one and a half is there. Uh, also in in six forty eight we did tweak the unbraked uh, requirements a little bit and we added um, another area to that to that uh, to that graph and we do allow towed vehicles um, when, when we have this the transport mass ratio of a 0.6 or less to go up to uh, the 40k or 25 miles an hour instead of just limiting it, limiting it to 20. So we did add that um, capability in there too. So, so yes, okay. the, uh, the towing vehicles do consider uh, unbraked towed vehicles. Okay. Do these braking standards affect products sold and used in Canada? And I, I will note there are a lot of Canadian companies uh, signed up for this. So uh, yeah, I kind of expected this question. So what, uh, how do you answer that, Bruce? Um, again, it's the, the manufacturer decides unless, unless that regulation, you know, one of the provinces adopts it, the standard as regulation. But, um, but it, and I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I mentioned before that uh, when, the when we talked about anything being put into law, there are regulators in Ontario and Quebec who are uh, very interested in the content and the development of these standards. And um, 
you know, that, that's not something that ASABE promotes. It's just not, these can be used as a tool if they wish to do that. So anything else then on this? Okay. Nope. Is a manufacturer allowed to offer brakes as an option so that the customer has the option for the higher speeds? Yes, they are. Yep. Okay. Is there a standard for tractors on including brake actuation, actuation i.e. hydraulic brake outlets? So the, the dual line hydraulic uh, interface is is described in in 648-5 and so yes it is in a standard um, there's there's couplers are defined in there um, so yes that that actuate that hydraulic actuation is defined in there so okay um tractors done when will the 2020 standards be available for FEMA members and what formats are available? Well, I can answer that one. Um, the CDs have arrived at the office and the flash drives, which it's a flash, a flash card, like a business side card with the ability to insert it into the USB on your computer have been ordered and they'll be at the office and I'll have to uh, get with Vernon and ship some down to St. Louis here uh, in the near future. Okay, when was the S648 published? That was March. What is the fallout if a manufacturer chooses to not add any brakes? So if um, following S648, if you inform the operator that, or if you know you're not gonna have any brakes, you're gonna have to limit your speed to uh, 20 miles an hour up to a 1.5 uh, transport mass ratio or that 0 0.6 at up to 25 miles an hour. So you'll have to inform the operator of that. So you just, if you don't want to have brakes at all uh, and you got big equipment, you're just going to have to uh, increase your recommended minimum towing vehicle mass and limit your speed. Okay. I work for a company that manufactures trailer braking systems and we have means to homologate trailers with brakes. We can assist with anyone that is looking at braking systems. We currently supply these systems to the EU markets. We also supply the valves for the two line system. So there are companies out there who, uh, who are on the, on the line here um, who, who do that. So anything we should add to that, Bruce? No, I guess you know 648 was written so that uh, the the systems from from the EU would would be acceptable in the U.S. Uh, 640, however, 648 isn't written with all the specifics that the EU regulation has, and it is open to others other means of of towed vehicle brake actuation and method. Mm -hmm. So it's. It's meant to be a little bit more performance based and not quite so prescriptive. Okay, is tongue load part of the towed vehicle weight or the towing vehicle? Right now we left it with the uh, uh, towed vehicle. So each mass generally has to stop itself. Um, we had a lot of discussion on that and um, we kind of ended up in with that situation or with that with that choice. Okay, so you reached consensus that that's how you do it. Okay. Yeah. Are we going to follow the EU standards? These are already established standards and accepted globally. I think it would be beneficial to all American manufacturers if, if they sell their equipment into the EU. So as I mentioned before, um, we kind of follow the, the performance requirements that are established in the EU. And we also uh, kind of borrowed the, uh, included the uh, dual line hydraulic portions out of the EU. So 
if it's accepted in the EU, it's going to meet S648. Yeah. Okay. And this this next question is why create a new standard when a globally standard already exists? What sounds like that was part of the answer to that. Yeah. And like I said before, 648 allows a lot of unbraked equipment at slower speeds and the, the EU regulation does not. Okay. And the last question we have, which it's right at uh, an hour. Oh, we have one more just pop up. Um, let's see here. For implement trains, what is the recommendation for stating the manufacturer's guidelines on towing mass, owner's manual, decals on the machine, et cetera? I think we mentioned that before. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I guess the one point I wanted to make on implement trains, um, for right now, we're, we're really kind of keeping the implement train such that it's um, really a manufacturer's recommendation for the implement train. And that's really kind of wide open. Either it's the same manufacturer for both or for all the components of the train. Um, where we get into a lot of questions is when you start mixing manufacturers in the train and we, we really haven't gotten into that too much um, the one thing that uh, can be considered is is if if you have like like on an air seater if the the toolbar is one manufacturer and the seat cart's another um, if the seat cart has or does or doesn't have brakes that really defines how much mass the unbraked toolbar can have so okay. oh, it's there's something there. Uh, we'll really, we can cover that in in, in subsequent um, webinars if we choose. Um, okay. But as long as that is is communicated, that's great. So. Okay. So that's the last question we have, Bruce. Uh, we appreciate you've answered well over thirty questions, and uh, we appreciate all the panelists today for their uh, their help. And we appreciate the attendees and your patience. Over 50 of you have stayed the entire time. So I wish everyone a good day. Do you have any closing comments, Bruce? Uh, nope. I guess if uh, oh, just if you're more interested in more of the performance requirements and how to meet those requirements, uh, uh, attend the, the webinar in two weeks. Okay. Well, thanks, everyone. And I wish you a wonderful Thursday. And we'll see many of you. Back here again in two weeks.